All right, what is up, everybody? Shoutscout0013 here coming in with a commando unit review and discussion with Kyler, Chris Velasquez, and Canadian Bear Graham. And we're going to just discuss about the new weapons and the profiles and give you a few different list ideas. If you want, you can just check in the description down below for the timestamp that I will leave for you to jump right into it, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about the giveaway that is going on right now. Right now we're giving away some vehicle damage dice from Baron of Dice, thanks to Grant Sonnier, who is a leading Patreon member, which huge shout out to all the Patreon guys. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing. And so all you have to do is be a subscriber and leave a comment down below to be entered in to win a couple dice. And the second way to win is to head on over to the Discord, where you just sign up, join up. And what I'm going to do is, since we already have a server level, I'm just looking at the server levels and scrolling through that just to see who the winner will be in Discord. So it's not like you have to comment a lot. As long as you are on the server level and participating in chat, you will enter in to win yourself for a couple of dice as well. And then lastly, all you got to do is become a member paid member of clan of shadows to be entered in to win um actually no as long as you are a member of the clan of shadows you are entered to win now if you are a paid member you get more entries to win but yeah anybody who is a patreon member can win even people who are just there and um just a part of it so thank you guys for everyone who is a part of the patreon i really appreciate it so the, those are your three different ways to win a Baron of Dice set of vehicle damage dice. And then lastly, if you just want to head on over to theburnacademy.com where you can subscribe for 15 bucks a month, it's basically, I'm just here to help you. There's online coaching, there's a monthly membership that is only 15 bucks a month, and it comes out to basically 50 cents a day. It's got three, four, five, and six day week workout programs, corrective exercise program, 30 minute torture program, at home stuff in case you just need to do stuff at home because you don't have a gym. There's abs and cardio, there's you know, future programs that I'll, I'll come out with. There's coaching videos and lots of ways to track your progress. Tons of recipes for you. So all you got to do is just sign up for 15 bucks a month. And you can see some of the people who I have helped in just a few months already lose a little bit of weight. But yeah, there's lots of stuff to do on here. Feel free to head on over. Link is down in the description down below. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into the video. All right, what is up, everybody? So, ShoutScout0013 here coming in with a, another video with Kyler. Yo, yo. And Canadian Bear. Hello, hello. And today, we're going to go over the new Clone Commando unit that is coming out. And, yeah, we'll go ahead and get started. So, the Clone Commandos, you have four in the unit, and that's it. Uh, you're, there's no other personnel or heavy upgrades, but there is a weapon slot upgrade. And we'll go over the weapons in just a minute, but we I'll go ahead and just quickly go over the keywords that are on there again. So you have two courage, one health each, red dice, no surging, your speed two. You've already got a DC-17 blaster carbine that's range one to two only and suppressive, which is really nice. And then they each throw two dice in melee. They all have a training gear, which is going to you. You're going to have to use the Katarn pattern armor for that gear slot. Then you've got a, an open grenade comms and then you're probably going to attach their configs to them for their weapon slot but the best thing that they have right now is all their keywords so you have complete the mission which is basically during the setup you're going to place a priority mission token on the battlefield outside of any deployment zone and then while the clone commandos are at range one of the priority mission token it's going to gain search to defend and then when a a, another a unit attacks or when this unit attacks an enemy unit that is at range one of that priority mission token this unit attack pool gains critical two which i feel like is going to pair very nicely with that sniper config since it's going to have lethal and then like i said you're going to have to equip the guitar pattern armor and then the infiltrate recharge target one and shield one is really really nice and you know we've we were talking about hq uplink as the comms because you know you can Go ahead and proc your HQ uplink, get that target one in that free aim. Then all you got to do is just, you know, shoot. And then if you recover, you get your shield back, you get your HQ uplink back. It, it, these guys are going to be so insanely awesome. So, what do you guys think about the clone com commandos? They are incredible. 
Um, I'm loving the stylistic choices on the cards. I'm liking the slot that they live in. Um, I think it's kind of interesting. Uh, I think it's a cool creative space to say, hey, these guys are are support units um, and not special forces. Uh, just, you know, in part because you, it does mean that you, in theory, could take three of these guys and try to squeeze in a, uh, you know, an ARC trooper into your list as well or, or, or what have you. But um, I just, I just like, I like seeing keyword soup on a card. Uh, key, uh, just, just a lot of things going on, but at the end of the day, it's also they're very simple. Um, I know, I, I mean, it looks like a lot going on, but like realistically, you know, the infiltrate, you, you, you know, you know what's going on at the very beginning of the game. The recharge and shielded are paired together. Target one again. It's just you're you're only really noticing that during your giving orders. The complete the mission is going to be the spicy keyword that's going to leave a lot of dynamic play you know, on the board. And people are going to have to be constantly thinking about, like, where do I place this token for best effect? Do I go offensive with the token? Do I go defensive with the token? If you have multiple clone commandos, you can basically be offensive and defensive because you get to place two tokens and they do benefit from each other's tokens. So that's cool. The wording on the, the italicized text is actually not exactly right. But if you look up the keyword complete the mission in the uh, the rules, it says a friendly priority mission token. And I think the picture on the card said um, uh, the priority mission token, which is, a, which, you know, is a, the fact that it says a friendly versus the, it, obviously the a friendly one means anybody is, is a friendly token. So. So it definitely gives you the ability to to utilize more commandos to better effect, right? You're basically painting the board with these little hot spots of goodness. Your opponent doesn't want to step in it because adding crit two to the pools is just so good. So, yeah, ten out of ten uh, for me. At least, and and you know maybe it's just because I wanted something new for Gar, so I'm overly excited about it. But I really, really, genuinely think that they're quite good and that they're going to be seeing a, a, a decent amount of play. Uh, and one thing to watch out for that I also kind of noticed today, because this is the first time we're having something like this, especially in GAR, is the token has to be outside, not the radius of a deployment zone. So right. you can still trigger the crit 2 in someone's deployment zone as long as the token is outside of it. That's a good point. Ooh. <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah. Considering considering that the placing it to the edge of a board or a, to, to the edge of a deployment zone that let's say is like range one, you really can hit the edge of the board, right? You know, so mm -hmm. that's pretty that's pretty spicy. Being able to put the token touching the, the deployment zone, and we have a lot of thin deployments. Yeah, advanced positions and major offensive to be specific. Those ones are going to be extra interesting. Obviously, battle disarray, lines, but battle lines and disarray, disarray are a little. Yeah. Yeah, I'd probably say disarray is the one that you probably don't care about that effect too much yeah. because it's it's yeah. But uh, battle lines, major and advanced, are really common, mm -hmm. so that's that's a big deal. Oh, think... actually, if you put if you put it in the corner of the major offensive, if you like, oh, you know that's what I mean? that, that little <laughs> corner right of the of the, uh... of the of the three of the three block, the three by three block, the corner. Mm -hmm. You basically get most of their deployment zone. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say oh, you're basically no. <laughs> forcing them to deploy a certain way to your advantage. Mm -hmm. I mean, you yeah. could do the same thing to hemmed in too. Oh, hemmed in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hemmed, hemmed in for for the uh, more specifically for the for the defender because they, their their deployment zones are tiny, you know, much tinier in the corner there. Yeah. Wait, when's the timing of this? During the setup. Okay. Yep. So at least they know. At least they know. Maybe. Well, but you know that then they're that, that's interesting, right? So maybe you can play that. That's another angle for for competitive play, where if you drop the token and you basically shut off that entire deployment zone, they're gonna be like, oh crap! Now I have to. Now I either have to deal with this token or I have to deploy in the other side where I maybe don't have the best terrain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and. Do you think that Delta Squad will have complete the mission? 
Yes, undoubtedly. Yes. There's no reason for them to not. I'm, I'm very interested to see what makes Delta unique since, assuming the phrasing on the description of the box is correct, we have our two upgrade cards now and it wasn't the wrong number. Because every other named unit like this has had characters as named upgrades. Mm -hmm. So, so this, this one's just going to be Delta Squad. Delta There's squad. no yeah. individual guys. It's just the upgrade guns that you can equip to them. As far as we know. So That's I'm very curious. Thing. Yeah. I feel like you're going to be able to do a very good amount of manipulating where your opponent really wants to go with that complete the mission and or i mean if at least you had two clone commandos you can put them on each objective your opponent's going to want to try to go to yeah there's going to be there's going to be a world where uh you want to place one in your own area and you basically are calling it you know your home base this will be good especially for things like hostage exchange if you're running a jedi where you basically say like hey i want to bring i want to bring my hostage back to my area of of, of the deployment zone and i want to have my my commandos kind of there as the 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 shield wall that's going to sit in front of them and be able to like be very you know like tanky you know as the enemy has to push in and that's that could be like an interesting way to go about it. And obviously, placing one in your opponent's area, depending on what their deployment is, may, may, makes it so that if you have a if you have a commando who's maybe taken an infiltrate and is kind of scattered a, over into a, uh, a, a a position where they can get some shots and get those crit twos, seems pretty pretty spicy. You know, four four red with crit two is is gonna is definitely gonna get some crits in there. And as long so, yeah, there's I think that. Also, just just making their hostage not want to run specific places. I think there's a lot of value there. Maybe it makes makes them run longer before they get that hostage into the deployment zone, and then maybe that's the difference on whether or not you can get a cheeky kill. And but I think we're going to see a lot of uh, I think we're going to see a lot of people wanting to play more intercept the transmissions and key positions, of course, because these guys are going to be very good at those. And. It I think infiltrate's really good, but what if you also had rapid reinforcements? Because you'd be able to rapid reinforce them close to complete the mission. Uh, don't isn't rapid just special forces? I don't know. It's no. non. You can do taunts. Oh, that's so right. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah, trooper it's units. Special. Yeah, oh. you can do taunts. Yeah, because because you can do taunts. So even if you couldn't infiltrate somewhere near at least the rapid reinforcements is range two instead of range three beyond enemy deployment or enemy units so you'd be able to get a little bit closer to that complete the mission token real easy yeah i'm i'm personally not a fan of that secondary or condition uh rapid but... reinforcements yeah i'm personally not a fan of it i think that it leaves a little bit too much variance into like it being in my list and not knowing what my opponent might have that might you know it, while i understand like i i i might i may want it right i only want it if i don't want them to want it does that make sense yeah and so i, ch I tend to avoid the card for that reason i want personally and, and we haven't looked at all the different lists and stuff but like personally i don't think that that's going to go into any of my lists that i've made but i i think that there's an interesting way to consider it for if you're going to lean really heavy into a list and really try to lean into maybe maximizing two maybe two clone commandos with delta as a third and get maybe some arcs that way you have options on which ones of those you want to throw into that and then it's pretty spicy and it's also something that people tend to not want to not want to waste one of their bands on. I know games where historically where I've played against like dark troopers, they always have that in their list because they can put, you know, a dark trooper in reserve there. And it's just ridiculous because they get to activate twice, you know, so they don't even lose really the turn of putting them onto the board. Um, and I hated having every single time to see it in, in the, in the, the lane where that, you know, knowing that like, okay, I, I have to ban this thing. 
uh, if I don't, I'm in, in a lot of trouble. So, yeah, I'm curious what it say, would look like. On a side note, I do enjoy, I, I enjoy using Rapid against Dark Trooper players, especially if they're doing the Gav list. Why? Because <laughs> it gets rid of one of their activations. Um, and more often than mostly because of the list I was running at the time, the Dark Troopers, like with the Wookiees and the fire supporting in the RPS, I had most, I think by the end of turn one, most of the times I would be facing against that list if I had Rapid. The first Dark Trooper unit was down to a unit leader <laughs> by the time the other one was even deployed. Yeah, I mean, if I mean, if you if you have the counter for it, though, you have the counter. For it. Yeah, so there are times where rapid is very very nice. Yeah, <laughs> and I just threw like some random phase one in there because like I don't care about you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, like... can you choose zero? No, it has to be one at least. You have to choose one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. I'd probably uh, yeah I'd probably throw yeah I'd do the same thing. I would probably throw just a random phase one who's just chilling, you know. Mm-hmm. Or if I was running an Echo, I probably would just throw Echo in there. Just because it's like, yeah, he he missed his snipe that turn. Don't worry about it. It's not that big of a deal. <laughs> and so then, what kind of uh, training upgrades would you want to bring on the clones, just in case you had to bring any? On the commandos specifically, yeah. I really only see them doing well with an O push probably that's the only one that I really like right now but of course you know my opinion will change I think over time I think that there's some value in being able to reconfigure that weapon into the double black profile at range 2 and get up and close and then get that aim on the on the black token it's it's like if you also if you also happen to be able to get them in the crit 2 window like having Eight black with crit two and a an name feels pretty juicy. What if you? I, I, what if I you don't think I would mind that pool. Like maybe three of them with the the double black, and then one of them with the suppressive gun. Because then you would have scatter, suppressive, and impact. If I can take advantage of the scatter, sure. Um, oh, sorry. I mean the suppressive. If I could take uh, if I could take advantage of the suppressive, sure. I find that I think right now the game suppressive keyword is is better on long range, not short range. If something's that close to where they're getting range two shots, generally speaking, it's not something that I'm worried about suppressing. It's probably something I'm gonna finish off. So it could, it could prevent you know an aim or a dodge before a shooting or another move at least especially if you're getting that close then you kind of prevent them possibly from getting one extra action. Yeah, like like I said, if I can if I can get the advantage of it, like if it's a courage two unit and it doesn't have it hasn't activated yet, uh, yes, all day long I think you 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 take that suppressive shot for one of the one of the die, hundred percent. But on a courage one unit, I don't think I would. I, I don't think I would bother. Uh, I think I would, assuming that there's, assuming I'm shooting at something that's not going to panic due to, due to, right? Again, so the, the Venn diagram of like, as long as it's not going to panic, <laughs> if it's Courage 1, I probably don't do it. If it is Courage 2 and they haven't activated, then I do do it again, but not if they have Indomitable, but then yes, if they're carrying something and maybe shooting it again later can panic them. <laughs> you know, it's the whole, the, 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 the matrix of, of possibilities. But uh, I love that it's an option. Let's just put it that way. I was like, maybe duck and cover isn't terrible on them since one of the things you're going to be doing a lot with them is recovering. Yeah, um, if you get suppressed, then you can't recover and shoot, right? Yeah, but I mean, if their main thing is already at range two, for two of their three guns, it, there's a good chance that they can become suppressed. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, I, I'll be honest. I, th I think it's great that they have that they have that that ch the the training slot. I just don't really think I care about it right now. Yeah. 
Yeah, I can't... personally. Uh, well, because situational awareness costs eight for them being uh, support. That's the only reason why I say that there's really nothing else. Because obviously situational would have been great at four and would have, I would have put it on them all day long. But they, I don't want to pay eight for situational. Yeah. I say terrible idea. Would be funny. <laughs> Jumping to the grenade slot and throwing sonic imploders on them. So now you have two separate suppressive die pools. Terrible idea. Really funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, you know what? Hold on. What if we play these guys hyper aggro, go up close and personal? Yeah. That's and then really lean into the range two play style, stay on their 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 range two their range two profile, and just don't worry about the HQ uplink. You get rid of the targeting. Yeah, you'll get the target occasionally, maybe if they get the odd thing, but like. You you only like I, I just mean like you you get rid of the the recover shoot recover shoot recover shoot you just sort of like use it on a turn where it's important, get them that aim for the turn and then you just get that nice bang you know eight dice. Uh, get a dodge off of it because you've exposed yourself and now you're coming out of cover with a shield, with a dodge. Well, with what... potentially being on your prior your priority point having surging reds. Yeah, because you could do smoke grenades. You could do up close and personal with smoke grenades and do your, you know, get your your aim, you know, move, shoot, pop your smoke that grenade is an and get that extra That is an expensive unit. That is an expensive unit. And I probably wouldn't put that in any list. I'd have to think very carefully about why I'm putting it in the list. But I do love the fact that HQ uplink on this unit, which it, to me is a must. I don't think that there's a world where I take this unit without it. I will say that I love the fact that because of the HQ uplink, it is not going to ever feel like it's dirtying your order pool. That feels incredible, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because having extra supports in there versus, like, you know, all the extra core and special forces can kind of muddy it up some. It, yeah, it feels awful when you have the odd tokens, just like, oh, man, they, I'm going to go with them at the wrong time. But these guys don't really do that. They just say, actually, your order bag is smaller, just inherently, right? Mm -hmm. Because we're going to go ahead and take care of ourselves for when... And yes, obviously, there are going to be times when you still get suppressed out and you don't get to recover shoot or whatever. But, I mean, generally speaking, that's, that's not all that bad. Uh, because if they are shooting these guys, they're probably shooting something that's incredibly durable and hopefully it's taking them far too much firepower to clear them off the board. And if that's the case, the rest of your army ought to be taking advantage of those opportunities and doing something more important. Yeah, I feel like it's going to be insanely hard to get these guys off the board, especially with the shield, their katan armor, and if you had barrier or any kind of guardian, these guys are probably going to survive especially even if they're next to a um a complete the mission token because that surge to defend shield barrier possibly or and or guardian yeah these guys are yeah standing. guardian guardian next to these guys with like obi-wan or boil is just gonna be so good i'll say since we've brought up guardian it's important to watch out for that the the wound that gets through katarn pattern armor would be after guardian so you can't guardian the wound that would get through right that right. Yeah. 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 Of course. Actually, of course. I have seen that question right. pop up in some some areas, so I just wanted to make sure we pointed that out. Yeah, uh, that's a, it's good to note because I think some people because it does it does specifically say when this unit would be assigned more than one wound, and in the event of guardian, you haven't assigned him more than one wound yet, right? Yeah. Or that would be at the like the dodge and cover step essentially. It's hap guardians happening earlier in the in the uh, the attack process. Right. Uh, yeah, from a non melee. Okay. Um, um. And so there's nothing really in the gear slot that we need uh, to upgrade them with. And then we've already kind of talked about a few of the grenade options and then HQ uplink. Uh, do you want to just talk about the guns? Or just w one thing before we get to the guns. Yeah. What in gear would be so broken on these guys that they didn't get a second gear slot. <laughs> Is it just targeting scopes? <laughs> I was trying to figure that like... out myself. 
because we have all we have a unit to get around the whole recon or the scouting on infiltrate problem which we'll get into later but so that's definitely not an issue since we can already do that um prepared supplies <laughs> like i can see yeah i i don't think that i don't think that there would have been an issue with them having an extra gear slot but maybe it's just the the elegance of it saying like look they have one of each icon minus force it, obviously yeah it could be cuz they have a <laughs> i'm still remembering uh, you would think Gar I, I just i just mean from the design perspective like maybe they could have just said okay we're going to design a card around them having like one of every possible type of gear equipment upgrade you know again barring barring force so it's so that it makes them feel like they are a jack of all trades but then when they were designing the katarn like they were like wow this thing is just so crazy uh you know and it's so maybe it's so what's the word i'm looking for so attached to them that like it didn't feel right to make the upgrade and you know so but then they also didn't want to put it on the card and so i think that maybe they were they were playing from that. I, I I always I always wonder. This would be where picking the brain of the developers, like while they were doing that, you know, just to see the different iterations that they had gone over, you know, what let what let them get to the point where they were like, okay, this Katarn pattern armor, this is this is something that you know we 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 iterated through this and this and this and this. Because of course, I love the fact that it's zero, right? That's that that is a very elegant solution. They're basically saying like these guys are upgrading right so yeah you could have put this text on their card minus the fact that it already has a wall of text uh mostly <laughs> reminder text but it is a wall of text so i i just i but i do i like the idea that it's on an upgrade card because it feels thematic to the idea that these guys are going into their armory they're going and loading themselves out and i i, I like that i just think that that's very thematic for this type of character oh yeah i can only imagine if environmental gear was also on them to get that you know unhindered in a way yeah there's there's plenty of like two cost things you give them scout so in you know or, or something like i don't know like maybe that would be cool hmm? uh, yeah although not that they need scout they have infiltrate but right actually well depends sometimes well, yeah. sometimes you, sometimes you Sometimes you want to be closer than range three. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I guess. Yeah, I, don't, I just I'm trying to think of a world where I would want to do that, but like, no, I probably. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it's uh no, I I I just like the thematic approach to it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I guess the gun is the next part, right? We're gonna look at their flippy floppy gun. Yeah, so it's basically the DC 17 M I C W S on both of them, but one is an anti armor config and the other one is a sniper config. The they both exhaust. But at the start of the unit's activation, you can still flip this card even if it is exhausted. And then the range 1 to 2 is 2 black, impact 1, and scatter. So I'm assuming, unlike the other one, which the sniper config specifically says while one or more of these weapons is in an attack pool, it limits it to lethal 1 instead of getting up to like lethal 4 or so. Um, but the other one would stack, so it would be, what, impact possibly 4? Yep. And then scatter would be really nice because then, are you trying to get into melee with these guys either? Mm, only after Katarn is spent, maybe. If it's still up, then uh, there's no way. <laughs> okay. Because I would just feel bad if essentially the unit got wiped and I never got to spend Katarn. Yeah. The sniper config though is high velocity, which is really good for Gar. And at least, no matter what, it's lethal one. And these guys, it doesn't say that you cannot fire support with them. Correct. So I think, I forgot who it was saying that, you know, if if Echo was on just a random phase one or two, and you fire supported, you could have that lethal two, critical one, and tons of red dice at range four. Yeah, yeah, that would be that'd be pretty gross. That'll take out something, because then at least you know Echo doesn't have high velocity, and these guys do, 
and you're fire supporting theirs, so it would be a high velocity shot lethal to you that they cannot spend any dodges on no matter what, and you're rolling uh, six six red dice, critical one, lethal two, high high velocity. That's a that's a pretty nasty sniper shot, and you already have an aim from target one if you've used your HQ uplink, and then you pro probably take you know an aim on that first shot, so you have two aims for the both lethals. Yeah, that, that sounds like an insane, insane shot to me. I'm going to look up lethal because now I'm curious about something, but keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> Giving you some ideas here. Um, well, that's really it for the, um, for the extra upgrades that it's going to be coming up with because I'm assuming, um, luckily, everything is zero cost. So it's going to be basically a 75-point unit. And then when you add HQ uplink, that's 85 points for that lethal two range four six red critical one. And if there if an a, a, if an enemy unit is around the complete the mission token, it could be a critical three lethal two six red dice from range um, four. So with what I'm finding right now. Don't do that with how it's worded. <laughs> Just because, and this is the only one that was this way as far as I can, I know, the lethal X is not referring to the pierce value you're gaining. It's related to the number of aims you have to spend in order to get pierce one. That is so weird. <laughs> That's never been a thought before. So... You wouldn't be able to get lethal two, or you would get lethal two, but at least how it's worded, it's the two is now referring to the number of aim tokens you have to spend, right? And if you're to rolling, gain Pierce one, so you'd have to spend it's two not, tokens to get one lethal. Yeah, <laughs> with how it's worded. That feels like that needs to get corrected. <laughs> yeah. Because that would be pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> AMG, listen, please fix. Yeah, please. Let us know how we can change that to make it lethal to just spend just two aims. Because, like I said, if you would already have target one for an aim, and then you take an aim action, there's your two. And then um, there's no sharpshooter so you're trying to get through cover but with all of the red dice you're throwing you're throwing like a you know a vader swing mm -hmm. and possibly critical possibly up to critical three at least critical one if not yeah it, there's lots of ways to maneuver all of that but you know high velocity is insane with that together yes um and is gar the new high velocity faction <laughs> I hope so. Because we've got the sniper config, we have crosshair, and we have shells on the tanker lat. Ooh. So, Can you fit all of those together, though? Cause probably not. Yeah, the Bad Batch. But just from like an option standpoint. The Bad Batch minimally is 160, I think, with possibly everybody upgraded. And then yeah. your Saber tank is, what, 200-something? Yeah, and 105 for the lat, so, yeah. So you're probably taking some... Not a good idea. ...and a clone commander, or Cody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think the only other option that has three is Empire, because of the lat also. Oh, yeah. The high-velocity shell. Well, they actually have four, then. Del Mico is also high-velocity. Okay, so snipers, Dell, uh, the the rockets, Iden. and Iden. Okay, okay. Yeah. But yeah. Sorry, I'm realizing things as we're talking about them. <laughs> no, yeah, that's another good thing about the, these videos is that hopefully you know it's opening a bunch of possibilities from everything that we're all talking about. Um, if you want, we can go over some of the lists. So we have the Obi Wan Padme. So Obi Wan, and this is Canadian Bears' um, little brainchild here. You've got Obi Wan, 
with Force Push, Barrier, and Protector. You've got Padme with Seize the Initiative. You've got a Phase 1 with the RPS-6. You've got another Phase 1 with the DT-15 Clone Medic and Smoke Grenades. And then you have two other Phase 1s with the Z-6 and Clone Medic. And then you've got two Clone Commandos with HQ Uplink, the Katarn Pattern Upgrade, and then their Config for a total of 800 points at 8 activations. Did you want to kind of explain a little bit about this list? Um, so I haven't touched Obi-Wan in a long time, <laughs> so it was mostly just I'd seen his success, I guess, over the past couple months, and it's like, hey, let's, let's try something, and before <laughs> him and Padme get nerfed, so, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, and Exemplar, this is, does Exemplar work yeah. with the clone commandos? Mm-hmm. Nice. Um, and they can still get tokens shared to from the the phase ones. Um, and the nice thing with the medics is they're great for Obi Wan, but also they're great for that shot after Tarn is spent. So you can bring back that one model, and now they're back at full strength. Um, You're I, essentially always healing a heavy. Almost. Yeah. That's the way to think about about it. So whereas like most most people lose a regular core guy and then down to the heavy, these these guys all get that that reconfigurable weapon, so they all have the, the red die shot. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's it looks nice. I like the the fact that, you know, you've got three medics in there either for RB one and or those clone commandos especially. Yeah. And I'm uh <laughs> I'm looking at the battle deck now again <laughs> after we've talked about the tokens and yeah, hemmed in major offensive. And if I were to get hostage, that is unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh yeah. Uh, the command cards. I mean, it's all three of both of the characters command cards, but who knows that could be changed. Cause that's that's a lot of where testing comes into for something like this when you've got multiple characters. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to yeah. I'm trying to think. I think we'll get to it, but I think even Yoda with his guidance on these clone commandos could be pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'll have to think of how, but yeah. And the next one we've got a ten activation, seven ninety five, so a five point bid. You have the clone commando with improvised orders. Oh, oh yeah, this one. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've got the clone commander with improvised. You've got three naked phase ones, two Wookiee warriors with the battle shield, two clone commandos with HQ uplink and the armor and their config, and then two lats with the shock trooper pilot and the onboard's comms channels. So, oh my goodness, this one I would not want to play against. Cause, well, who are you putting in the lat to begin with? Uh, the Wookies. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Essentially. Um, do the, probably do the lats first for deployment and then do the Wookiees, do the clone commander in phase ones to wait as long as possible to see where the army is going and then put the commandos on the flank. Um, so that by the time they move up into range, the Wookiees will have been flown in and smashed in. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it'll be interesting. It's, it's uh, it is, but, uh, um, I, I kind of took the, I substituted the flutters from a previous version of this list and just said, Hey, why only stop at impact one and pierce one? Uh, why not <laughs> do more? <laughs> Yeah, those clone commanders. Uh, I'm assuming are taking place of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and improv just to help you in case like one of the lats is out of range and you couldn't get an order on both of them or something like that. Um, just so you can hold back the Wookiees longer that are inside. Okay. Um, 
And the and the clone shock trooper pilot either gives an aim and a, or a surge or something like that. Aim, dodge, or surge. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Um. Yeah, and then next up you have a, another ten activation list that's seven ninety three, and this one has the clone commander with improvised. It's got Captain Rex with recon for that extra scouting party. You've got Padme with situational awareness. You've got. A phase one with the RPS, two phase ones with the Z6, a whole well, a strike team with Echo, and then three clone commandos with HQ uplink and everything else that you usually would put on them, and that's ten activations. Yep. Um, and then you've got you know recover the supplies, key positions, and some other really amazing conditions, uh, deployments, and objectives. If you want to explain this one, uh, so. Pretty much what I was thinking with this one. This one's actually the one that I think I would be most excited to try would be the right phrasing. Like, the the lat one is fun. It's just crazy. Um, the OV one is fun, but it's very castle, and I've done a lot of that with Yoda. Um, yeah, this is this is called Clones Can Have 10x2. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, we're almost all clone keyword. Um, yeah. But pretty much the idea with this one is it's a shame you can only infiltrate up to range three. So why not have scouting party and possibly get better cover? Um, and if I can get some kind of wonky deployment that forces awkward VAT placement, uh, because infiltrate doesn't stop you from going in the deployment zone, it's just range three of a unit model. Um, they can still get into some weird spots. And then, oh, hey, look, I divulged Padme's three pip, and now she's with them and giving them tokens on turn zero. Oh, <laughs> they have a dodge before the game starts. <laughs> that is a great idea. Um, that and... If that's the case, then they can just sit on her and keep her safe. Uh, so she can just take secret mission right off the bat, potentially. I'm assuming you'd probably put the uh, complete the mission token where you're infiltrating them, I'm assuming. At least one of them, yeah. Um, and then the other ones three. just... Yeah, and the other ones would just be like leading up to and possibly one behind just so I can back up if the terrain requires me to or allows me to run away essentially um but like recover as a similar thing set them up in an awkward spot and just not go for the center box or just camp there and kill whatever wants to go for the center box i mean three three of these tokens is a surprisingly large amount of area when you think about the fact that it's uh it's at range one right of the token so don't even worry about the fact that you're getting, you know, a token size of amount of space, but like range, it's effectively each one is just a little more than range two a piece. So you can stretch from their deployment zone all the way to your inside of your own deployment zone and not have, and like, and with a little bit of overlap, right? Like if you just string mm -hmm. three across the table, short, short edge, because it's range six worth of, of, of area. So you could probably make a runway where, <laughs> these these guys always have all the bonuses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, sit them on the center for KP and intercept. Um, yeah, pretty much the idea is just don't let them feel safe. Yeah. Have them on the back foot from turn zero. Well, I think if anyone uh, sees clone commandos in the, a list, I don't think they're going to feel safe <laughs> at all. I mean, the only thing that they, the uh, only thing that com lone commandos really don't want to deal with is a lightsaber. Like, I'm, I mean, that's the only real true weakness to this unit, because mm -hmm. the uh, the uh, Katarn armor does not work against lightsabers, and so they can nor do be just <laughs> nor nor do shields. Uh, yeah, so effectively, they really are just anti gun line. And I think that that's incredibly good right now because we need anti-gun line in the in the meta, uh, given especially what we saw at Worlds, where where gun line was like very 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 strong. So, um, 
I didn't think about this, but with the you know the guitar and armor, I guess if some if there's a a huge dice pool with Pierce, yeah, I guess you basically just cancel out all of that and just take one wound. So it's yeah, you it's you just yeah you just lose a guy. Yeah, it'd be great <laughs> against any uh, large dice pool with that Pierce. Make Anakin feel really sad after a saber throw. Yeah, that's what <laughs> I was thinking. Uh. They were through fire support, and he's just like, mm, nah. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> nah. <laughs> just swats one thing. Saber. He, just, he just throws one of his random clone buddies in front of it. <laughs> it's like, that guy died. <laughs> one thing we should also point out for, especially for, because um, this is a new faction getting the infiltrate keyword effectively, that like Padme is so sensitive that it's like you weren't really infiltrating her to begin with most nine times out of 10. Um, but with these guys, with how chunky they are, they're a lot like Cassian to a degree because of his command cards and some of his keywords and Iden where you think, ah, defensive, I can do this and not die. Um, so we're going to see a lot of people very aggressively infiltrating with these guys more than likely. If you're playing hostage against the list that has these guys, spread out your models as much as possible. Yeah, droids are like of your them. hostage unit. Do not clump them up. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I I definitely agree. Yeah, you don't you don't want to give them an opportunity to to get angles on your hostage. Yeah, like they already they're, can't they're be targeted. Gonna, they're going to be very good one. at it. They're going to be very good at, at at getting those angles. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and then next up, we do have another eight activation. Uh, that Kyler has submitted and given us. So it's got Yoda with Barrier, Push, and Force Guidance. And then you've got Chewie with Recon Intel. You've got a Phase 1 with the DC-15, another Phase 1 with Just Boil, and another Phase 1 with the RPS. You have a whole uh, troop, or a whole unit of ARC Troopers with the DC-15, and then two Clone Commandos with HQ Uplink, the Katarn Pattern, and then the DC-15 Config. Do you want to kind of the, go over your list? Yeah, so I was playing for uh, quite some time, effectively, the Yoda, Chewbacca, and two and a half arcs, right? So it was two full arcs with Echo Strike, and it effectively was this, I just took that list and I said, hey, wait a second, these guys are, you know, points-wise, points, points -wise, not particularly expensive. I was like, hmm, that's really interesting, like what can I do with that, right? So I just started to, to fiddle with the list and all of a sudden I realized that I could, as long as I'm willing to get rid of Echo, which is a little sad because Echo's gun is really great. Uh, I think Boyle, I think ha the tra just, just, just for everybody, I did consider, yes, I could play the one naked c clone and I could have Echo instead, okay? I thought about it. <laughs> but I really like, I really like Boyle uh, for, for, for uh, protecting Chewbacca, uh, ironically enough, um, more than anything. It's like, hey, Chewbacca has red saves now, right? So, it, you know, Boyle is, Boyle is actually pretty good. And, you know, you don't want to shoot Yoda because you have Boyle and Chewbacca to absorb those shots, so... Uh, it's you know protect the president typical list uh and then of course it plays a, into the the shenanigans of like giving your full arcs a uh, relentless shot with fire support uh possibilities uh depending on the situation right you know um so you you can either relentless your arcs or you can give the token to you can give the token to a, a phase one and then when you activate those arcs, they get a fire support, and then you can guidance the clones that you have already used for fire support, and then they can fire again with uh, the Yoda guidance because they have Relentless. So that's kind of a nice little cheeky thing where you still get to move them and shoot with them even though they fire supported and wasted their token. And that's especially good if they if they would otherwise have been suppressed because they're Phase 1s, and Phase 1s don't know how to roll paint whenever they need to get their suppression off of them. So long story short is that it's Yoda doing Yoda things, right? A lot of tricks. Um, and I thought that uh, it was also pretty cool because guidancing uh, your clone commandos on the turn where they're going to want to do a recover shoot, but maybe they need to move a little bit. You get to guidance that move. 
on them, and then they can do the recover shoot like normal. I thought that that was a little bit cute. <laughs> a little, yeah. No, that's awesome. Okay, it's a lot a bit cute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the fact that they can recover, shoot, and move, it seemed it seemed too good to pass up. So anyway, this is this is a this is a little brain uh, brain baby of mine to to see what you could do. Obviously, when Delta gets revealed, those arc troopers are the first to go. I think if Delta is good, like really good, and th because then of course, you know, I just selfishly i don't want to get rid of my arcs they're beautifully painted uh by my commission artist so i i want to keep playing a set of arcs on on the table but i'm totally willing to give them up for for delta if delta is amazing if delta is just a slight upgrade to the clone commandos i hope that they can kind of cost in the same point point band because then i can just sw swap them out outright what I really hope is that Delta, honestly, and, and I know we don't know anything much about them other than that they're supposed to have a lot of different weapon choices. What I'm hoping is, is that they're basically just a clone commando team and they pretty much will cost about the same. That's that's my hope. Like, get, like relatively similar cost, if not exactly the same cost. And then the only difference is that they're, you can only bring one because it's a named unit. Yeah, but uh, uh, until then, I think this list is pretty spicy, and it's something that I'm thinking about proxying up and giving a shot uh, in my next local. Let's see. I, I imagine the dream is to also use the commandos in this list to shoot something with the grenade launcher to scatter them out, and then have Yoda charge in or Chewy backpacking Yoda in. <laughs> yeah, there's there's always going yeah there a one hundred percent the scatter keyword can make the turns where you're gonna go aggressive they can turn real ugly for the opponent because they've they they feel like they've measured it out they feel like they're safe and then all of a sudden they find themselves range one or you know move a move one closer to you and that that could be devastating if if I'm able to use Yoda to leapfrog that unit around. So, especially off of Yoda one pips, these can be incredibly, incredibly powerful. I pretty much feel like against if if I run this list, I don't see a world where my opponent lets me have hostage. It's banned every single time. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I uh, there's no you know. I don't even care if it's a Vader list. Like it doesn't matter. Even Vader's gonna be like, you know what? I know I have the cute you know, uh, ye eating trick of of getting the guy, but it's like. Uh, just they they just don't they just don't want to risk it because their their guy is absolutely dead to Yoda every day. I, even the Gideon Dark Trooper shenanigans are not safe with this going up against this. Yeah, I'm 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 really liking the fact that I do have a very scary impact profile potential with these guys because the Dark Troopers like to get into that nice convenient range band that I also want to be in for getting maximum impact. So the one thing that I found is my biggest pain point is that I don't really like playing against Dark Troopers as Yoda because my lightsaber is great, but it's not great enough because, yeah. because you need to really... I feel like Vader and Anakin are be much better into Dark Troopers just because that third pierce... I know it seems weird because, yeah, I know Yoda double attack and it's pierce four, but it's... Oftentimes, it's just about getting that one good pool where you're just like, no, you're definitely, definitely, definitely losing like bunch of models in one clap, in one go. And then with Anakin's protection from having his dim so, if you dealt five damage to them, they're going to lose three models in one turn, right? Because you're going to, they're going to roll average on their blocks. You're going to pierce three of them. They're going to lose two models, have a wound on another guy. And then if they go to punch you back in melee, you say, ah, lose another guy because you're just going to dodge one and they're going to take a wound. So that's why I like Anakin better. And then Vader, of course, you know, he's just chonky. He's got a HP. He doesn't give a crap. Yeah. Um, also, you know, Vader can throw him around. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> but um but but Yoda, yeah yoda doesn't particularly like to play into dark troopers as much now all of a sudden i have an impact profile that i can bring that is scary and i think has a good answer into dark troopers so i'm super excited to see 
what this can do. Also, yeah, dark troopers have huge dice pool, and Katarn just says like, yeah, I lost a guy, big deal. All right, boom, you just you know annihilate a bunch of their models. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fire support, yeah. fire support a uh, RPS and have what impact? How much is it total? Six. Uh, yeah, be six, and if you wanted to, you can do it into Chewy and do have Pierce natively. It's it'd be true. gross. That's true. That's true. Absolutely. Very gross. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. natively, any, you any, have any anytime range. I can, anytime I can take dark troopers and knock them down a peg, I'm going to take that opportunity. Yep. I mean, what natively you have impact um, eleven at range. <laughs> yeah, without the lightsaber. Yeah, that's, yeah. I, I'm I'm digging that. Yeah, I, that's I, I like that number. Yeah, we go. Yeah. Wow. Impact, impact fifteen. If I get two lightsaber swings. Yeah, impact fifteen. Yep. And that was from how? Yeah. Uh, four from each commando. Yeah. So, and then Chewbacca plus ones, and then two from the RPS for 11. Ooh. And then Yoda has two lightsaber attacks for two more each. So 15 total, if you are able to get melee. So even, I'm, I'm trying to figure out now, because at this point, you're spending 97 points for ARC troopers versus 85 points for clone commandos with a shield and possible surge to defend. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't even think we might see ARC troopers very much anymore. Or we might see uh, maybe my teams. You need, you need to be able to threaten the sharpshooter pierce fire support. I think it's still important. That's the reason why I didn't go triple clone commandos. Okay. It's the only reason. You still need to threaten that that sharp that sharpshooter fire support off with the DC with the DC 15. You get the crit back into the pool because I couldn't take echo, and that's why I went with the DC 15. Okay. So I get I get the very pristine dice pool. Assuming let's say it's a range three shot, right? You're getting five black and a red from the arc troopers, and then you're gonna get five more black and two more red. So ten black three or yeah ten black three red critical one sharpshooter one tactical that's a pretty spicy pool okay that makes sense i'm on board now. yeah and pierce one yeah. yes and of course and of course it goes without saying it's more than just one aim folks it's yoda okay i'm gonna have as many aims as i need <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'll have plenty of surges plenty of aims uh and some dodge tokens to give out to those commandos to make them stay bunkered down. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's 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 the that's really the idea of the list. The list was it was saying, hey, what's what's a Yoda good stuff list, and what can I swap my arcs for? Uh, or sorry, trying. Of course, I'm trying to build a commando list, and so I I looked at my arc list and I said, hey, this is this is the list that has the most wiggle room. I the only thing that I felt like I was really 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 hoping to still keep is protector on Chewbacca, but that's why Boyle's there, because then I just I. It, it keeps it I have more protector and then I just have to worry about crits for Yoda which I can deal with that yeah and for eight activations I feel like this list is going to be feeling way it's a, it's more. A, it's a chunky eight yeah it's a chunky eight nice well um yeah I feel like these guys are going to be insane and they're going to be very hard to kill and they're going to be very resilient um it sucks that they don't quite have impervious, but that Katarn armor is going to, I think, kind of make up for it along with that shield. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, no, I, th I, th I think that these guys are going to be great. I any final thoughts for you guys on the commandos? Um, Can't wait to see Delta. That's it. Yeah. Um, I'll say they, one little thing, too, is they are... Like they make the clone mirror very sad, because <laughs> it's like either it's echo at range five, oh no, you rolled a crit, shield, <laughs> or it's oh no, you fire sported guitar and armor. <laughs> yeah, the like... mirror, the mirror, the mirror did get get spicier. Yeah, yeah, which is, which is why, which is why I think uh, I'm I'm more inclined to to favor the commandos over arcs i agree with uh with you there shadow but the 
but the I think I think I still need for the other armies, the non clone armies, I still want to have that that arc trooper fire support. It's too good. Yeah. Um, and I hope we see our first errata to a battle force in a positive way. <laughs> that isn't oh, yeah. a, a yeah, removal. <laughs> it's an addition. Give, give Wookiees <laughs> Delta. Please. <laughs> it's the only clones we want to bring. <laughs> <laughs> and it was because Delta was at Kashyyyk, or yep. yeah, they were yeah, fighting in the Battle of Kashyyyk in the background and the video game. Uh... Yep, and and not not only is it lore accurate, but um, it also ties in with the idea that the only tokens that you're bringing in a Wookiee list is going to be Special Forces tokens and support tokens. So it it's you know what I mean. Like so, if you bring some flutters and some and you throw in like one commando. And it's just Delta, uh, that that's still pretty cool because you 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 still have that unified order pool. So I think mechanically it's also nice. Yeah, I forgot what battle force it was, but it had mentioned. I think it. I forgot which one it was, but it mentioned like operative spot that didn't have any operatives, or there was. I feel like they've tried to future proof it to where they could add units to a battle force. Yep, I and then think they that's five oh first. Oh, five oh first. <laughs> yeah, and then they just I, don't. <laughs> yeah, we're still waiting for Ahsoka, guys. It's okay. We'll wait. <laughs> and Django. I keep saying Django. And Django. Yeah. Sad Padawan noises. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Thanks, guys, for coming up and joining. Uh, this was a, an amazing video, and I think it's very eye-opening to see the possibilities with commandos that you guys have shown us in these really good lists and i i didn't make one myself just because i figured i'm not going to be as great as of making a republic list as you guys because that's primarily what you guys like to play and you guys know a lot more synergies with republic i feel like and so I, these lists are going to be great and what i can do is I, I won't leave them in the chat in the description down below because they're not on Legion HQ yet. Uh, so hopefully you guys screenshot of them or we'll proxy and definitely ask these guys in the Discord if you've got questions because I feel like y'all do answer quite a bit and there are some really good questions out there. So yeah, mm -hmm. thanks guys for uh, coming and joining up. Absolutely. Yep, anytime. All right, guys. Well, we will catch you next time. Peace. Later.